Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to XQ Solutions Limited Q4 FI24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha Gupta from ENY Investor Relations. Thank you and over to you, Ms. Gupta. Thank you, Neera. Good afternoon to all participants in the call. Welcome to the Q4 FY24 earnings call of Exclusive Solutions Limited. The results and press release have already been mailed to you and you can also see the same on the company's website. In case anyone does not have the copy of press release and presentation, please do write to us and we will be happy to share with you. Representing the management today, we have Mr. Balaji Vishwanathan, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Pariya Karupan Palyanam, Palyapan CFO, whom we will be referring to as Mani. Balaji will start the call with a brief overview of the quarter and year gone by, which will be then followed by Mani, who will who will be uh, giving you a brief uh, update about the financials. After that, we will open the floor for Q&A session. As usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is mentioned in this call, which gives any outlook for the future or which can be construed as forward-looking statement, must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainties that we face. This risk and uncertainty, uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with the SEBI and subsequent annual reports, which you can find it on our website. Having said that, I will now hand over the call to Mr. Balaji. Over to you, Balaji. Sure. Thanks, Tasha. Thanks, Mira. <clears throat> uh, thank you for uh, uh, the investors who, investors among us who have joined the call. Uh, for uh, the uh, quarter ended uh, 31st of March, uh, we have seen a marginal growth. Uh, primarily, <clears throat> we had, uh, if you recollect, uh, the last quarter we had a one-time benefit. So we were to uh, net off with that, we, we had a very marginal growth of around 3.6, 3.7%. And excluding that, we had a growth of around 2.6%. Uh, the, the core markets are still showing uh, weakness in terms of pipeline and demand. While some of the markets like Middle East and uh, India are actually showing, uh, you know, uh, better pipeline and uh, more opportunity. But the size of the opportunities obviously is relatively smaller. Uh, we've been <clears throat> one of our challenges has been around the uh, expectation of demand based on which we had built a certain amount of bench from Q2 or calendar year Q2, uh, calendar Q2 of 2023 onwards, uh, and. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, you know, some of those opportunities did not really materialize. So uh, we had a higher bench or uh, the higher number of people than what we required when we started the calendar year. Uh, we've been acting on optimizing our <clears throat> bench and the talent pool based on what our demand is. And uh, the action started from uh, end of February uh, uh, 2024. Uh, while part of the, uh, you know, uh, actions are actually been shown this quarter, that is in Q1 of this financial year. Uh, but most of the actions will actually start showing uh, from Q2 onwards, which will actually help us in getting to the target uh, with the margins of uh, 16 to 18%, which is what we have been talking about for the last uh, year and a half to two years or so. Uh, overall, we have been investing in uh, you know, AI and uh, the digital technology, which is what is showing the growth opportunities as well. And uh, we have been investing on both in terms of training and upskilling our team and also in terms of inducting some of the leadership uh, from these domains. Uh, and over the last uh, six months, most of our growth opportunities have been primarily in this, and that's what we've got to show in our uh, digital share of the business as well. <coughs> We have, <clears throat> we have had uh, uh, you know, not much traction with uh, 
some of our smaller customers. That's why you probably see a slight decline with some of the smaller customers. But we have actually signed a record number of new customers. Uh, the opportunity sizes have been relatively small, which we hope that uh, as the demand picks up, uh, you know, during the course of the next two quarters, we will see more number of customers. Sorry, Samir, excuse me. Yeah. Speak a little louder, please. Is it better now? Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, as we go through the next couple of quarters, we will actually see more number of those customers moving beyond the half a million, uh, getting closer to the million and million plus uh, uh, customer range. Uh, that's basically what I have as a summary. Uh, would uh, like uh, money to provide more information about the financials. Money over to you. Sure. Thanks, Balaji. Uh, so I'll talk about the uh, financial uh, results for the quarter, coming back to the previous quarter. So it's a quarter on quarter comparison. So the operating revenue was at 2,554 million compared to 2,502 million uh, in the last quarter. So increase of about 2.1%. Uh, our overall total income was 2,572 million. Uh, it's down by 1.6% compared to the previous quarter of uh, 2,614 million. When it comes to profit, our EBITDA was at 398 million, which is 15.6 percent, compared to 385 million, which is 15.4 percent in the last quarter. Profit after tax was at 148 million, which is 5.7 percent, compared to 338 million, which is 12.9 percent in the previous quarter. EPS uh, stood at 10.12 rupees in this quarter, compared to 21.93 rupees in the previous quarter. Overall cash position, uh, we were at 1,840 million net cash uh, in this quarter compared to 2,117 million in the previous quarter. I'll move on to the uh, year on year comparison. Uh, operating revenue, uh, as I said, was, this quarter was at 2,554 million compared to 2,311 million in the same quarter last year. So this is an uh, increase of about 10.5% year on year. Total income is at 2,572 million this quarter compared to 2,349 million same quarter last year with an increase of 9.5%. On profits, EBITDA, we were at 398 million this quarter compared to 431 million in the comparable quarter last year. As a percentage, this is 15.6% versus 18.7% same, same period last year. On uh, PAT, uh, profit after tax, we were at 148 million this quarter compared to 219 million in the same quarter last year, which is 5.7% versus 12.3% comparable period. On EPS, we were at 10.12 rupees this quarter, which is 18.73 in the same period last year. On cash, we were at 1,840 million this quarter compared to 1,557 million, same period last year. I'll talk about the full year uh, comparison. On a full year basis, full year ended in March 24, we were at 9,649 million on revenue, on operational revenue, compared to 9,033 million in the previous year. This is a growth of about 6.8% on um, full year, year on year basis. Total overall income, we were at 9,724 million, compared to 9,194 million in the last year. This is a growth of about 5.8%. On profits, EBITDA, we were at 1,483 million, which is 15.4 percent this year, compared to 2,001 million, which is 22.2 percent in the last year. Profit after tax, we were at 887 million this year, which is 9.1 percent, compared to 1,357 million, which is 14.8 percent in the last year. EPS, we are at 58.27 rupees this year, compared to 86.27 rupees in the last year. On uh, net cash position, we were at 1,840 million this year compared to 1,557 million in the year ended March 23. That's the uh, overall highlight on the numbers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchscreen telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Rohit from I thought PMS. Please go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi, Balaji. <coughs> hi, Mani. Uh, so, Balaji, just wanted to understand. So, this quarter, uh, our margins were about 13%. Then you are attributed that there was a bench, etc. So, how do you look at the coming year, uh, FY25? Uh, uh, so, if you can just maybe uh, give your overall views on what kind of growth and how should we think about margins for this year? Hello. 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 We are on mute. Sorry, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Now we can. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so, from an overall growth perspective, we are, uh, you know, uh, as you could see, you know, we've done around three percent uh, organically, uh, you know, in this quarter, and uh, we expect that we'll probably be similar. Uh, growth percentages over the next uh, three quarters as well, which is basically make it up, uh, you know, closer to the double digit uh, growth is what we are expecting for uh, the uh, for the uh, year. Having said that, of course, you know, each quarter is comes with its own challenges uh, depending upon how the core market react, particularly uh, UK, Germany, and France, and where most of our business has actually come from. <laughs> From a margin perspective, our EBITDA uh, should be in a similar range as what we are at right now. It should be in the range of, right now we are at 15.6, but we expect that we should be in the range of 16 to 17 over the next uh, uh, three quarters as we start reducing our uh, bench and our utilization rates uh, going forward. Mani, you want to add anything more? Yeah, I think uh, you've covered most of it, uh, Balaji. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, similar growth rates and our profitability should be in the range of 60 to 17 percent for the next three quarters. So. Got it. so, just two more questions on this. So, one is, uh, I mean, our longer term goal in terms of uh, CY25 goal was obviously a much higher goal with the, with, in terms of workforce. Uh, and uh, at the same time, I think which we sort of deferred. Uh, so, I mean, we had that 10,000 odd workforce goal. And at the same time, at the time of the merger, uh, we had this plan of increasing our outsourcing and offshoring to the Indian offices. So, in that context, I mean, uh, how does that strategy play out? Because you're just still sort of guiding for only 10, 11% kind of growth uh, for this year. So how does, uh, I mean, how should one look at it? Uh, maybe not this year, but like longer term, maybe two years out, how does one look at the overall business from here on? Because I understand we had some one-off last year, uh, but even adjusting for the base, uh, in between two, three years of sort of flattish kind of growth, uh, two years of flat kind of growth, at least on the profitability side. So, just want to get how, how should one think about the business, let's say, two years out from here? In the context of the larger target and uh, in terms of workforce, and also the greater outsourcing that uh, or offshoring that was supposed to happen at the group level, which should which should benefit Indian uh, Indian companies, I mean, Indian subsidiaries, which are listed now. Yeah. So, <clears throat> So because of the softness in the European market, uh, the growth whether it is, uh, from the group also has been relatively lower. Uh, having said that, the group uh, uh, contribution to our revenue growth is higher than what we have been able to do directly from uh, the uh, uh, the other uh, market pressure. And uh, from a profitability perspective, I think we have we uh, you know we had a Set back in uh, the last two three quarters because of some softness in demand and uh, you know some of the uh, one-time benefit which actually gave us a bigger push last year. 
but uh, organically our expectation is that we will be in the 16 to 18 percent range which is what uh, you know we talked about earlier as well and i don't see that changing significantly from where we are right now because we had a significant amount of cost because of uh, some of the headcounts that we had in the last two quarters which we have started acting on and uh, that's why we are still only inching towards that 16 and a half charging percent uh, which is what we would expect over the next couple of quarters and we should be in the 16 to 18 percent range and in terms of headcount growth if the headcount growth was not just organic but it was supposed to be a combination of both organic and inorganic and given <clears throat> given the current uh, situation the inorganic component has not kicked in at all and uh, you know hopefully sometime next year when the markets become better and we are able to get uh, little more access to uh, you know cheaper funds uh, there is also an expectation that we will uh, you know the group will do some acquisitions and which will actually help us in growing the headcount numbers in india as well but of course that we are all uh, expectations right now uh, no nothing concrete at this particular point of time got it and we had uh, we are opening a few branches or uh, and sort of uh, opening new offices in the context of this subdued demand how should one see it and then finally uh, uh, bagaji i mean cash balance is, is also getting accelerated and um, we were initially waiting for the merger to happen that was not done now uh, you talked about inorganic also but i mean any sense on like uh, if you can articulate the broader capital allocation strategy how how do you would how would you want to distribute the cash or use the cash rather sorry so if you can maybe talk about that so the the offices that we opened that it is actually expanding our capacity of uh, in chennai and bangalore is primarily in anticipation of some of these demand and also expecting people to come back to work because that is one of the important elements for us to have a more uh, cohesive team and also whom we will be able to upskill a lot more easier rather than having everybody working uh, remote so right now we have the capacity uh, over the capacity that we have added both in chennai and bangalore will give us a uh, little more headroom than what our current demands are and we are looking at opportunities to expand even beyond this provided we have a more clearer outlook on uh, demand and where where it's going to come from but we are still uh, optimistic that we should be able to add uh, more facilities because the uh, outlook from 2025 onwards at this particular point of time looks uh, even though uh, not formed up but it certainly looks better or uh, we expect that once the core market starts opening up and they are able to because the inflation and other uh, elements are actually stabilized in most of the market particularly in UK Germany and France so once we start seeing some growth uh, we we should uh, you know be able to grow faster in India uh, from those markets as well and on capital allocation uh, we are still uh, you know similar to what uh, we talked about earlier we are still thinking that we will be able to uh, desired on something which will uh, some inorganic opportunity even within india even though small because of our cash component which will help us in adding better capability and uh, which will help us attract more business from the group as well if we are not able to find anything uh, you know over the next few <laughs> quarters then we will divide on uh, you know how do we allocate uh, the cash accumulated and uh, no so actually the, uh, that's helpful by the office uh, uh, is question was not necessarily about chennai and bangalore but we are also opening overseas offices so i mean uh, the office, overseas office in dubai is actually we are closing down our free zone entity in dubai and opening an on site or uh, on site uh, uh, office in dubai primarily because uh, the government regulations have changed there which will which op- which allows foreign entities to operate from mainland which is to cater to the local business within dubai so till now we were actually having a local contractor or local uh, human resource company which was actually providing us the visas we don't need that anymore uh, because of this change in rules and that's the reason why we opened the new office in dubai got it 
Okay. I'll join back in this group. I, I, have, I have a few more questions. I'll join back. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from the line of Meer Manohar from Carnelian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for giving the opportunity. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand, I mean, do we have testing uh, as a service uh, in our verticals? I mean, I uh, just wanted to get an understanding. Do we have testing as a service offering? Yeah, that is the that is the biggest uh, company we have. Uh, so we started off as a testing company. Well, we have actually uh, branched out beyond testing. Testing is still uh, our bread and butter. Only thing is that earlier we used to have a significant amount of manual testing or functional testing element. Now, now that particular component has actually increased more in the automation, uh, the automated testing space and DevOps rather than uh, the functional testing element. Uh, sorry, sure, sure. So, what would be testing revenue for us? Uh, I mean, in this uh, financial year, FR24. So, the way the business is split in, uh, uh, here is that you know we have thirty percent of the business which comes from engineering and seventy percent of the business which comes from technology services, is what we call it. As. Out of the seventy percent and the technology services, close to around forty-five percent also is from the quality assurance or what we call it as the the, uh, the software testing. But and the remaining is automated testing, performance testing, security testing, multiple other elements, including DevOps, software development, and other things. Such was understood. So, 45% of the company, right? No, 45% of the 70%. So, it's approximately 30, 30, 1%. Per understood. Sure, sure, sure. Sir, how do you see this particular pie of, pie of the piece in this specifically generative era, I mean, Gen AI era? I mean, there are talks that uh, the manual testing and the uh, part of the piece will get substantially impacted. Uh, so, your take on this will be quite helpful. Yeah, it is going to get impacted, and that's the reason why we are gearing up our own investment in AI as well. And we have a couple of... Uh, you know, uh, POVs and tools that we have created based on Gen AI and what we call as predictive quality assurance and risk-based quality assurance as well, which will which will primarily drive more of automated testing and uh, or the test engineering part, uh, and that's the that's the direction in which we are going as well. So ten years back, probably quality assurance was ninety percent of the business. Uh, sure, understood. That's that's helpful. Uh, my second question was on the engineering outsourcing. I know we were looking at uh, the engineering overall outsourcing, which was there uh, from the group. I mean, after the corporate restructuring, which happened to take it from five percent to twenty twenty five percent. Can you just mention, I mean, you know, what is the current status on this? I mean, you know, to what level of uh, penetration have we reached uh, for the engineering outsourcing, and what uh, what more uh, kind of scope can be there? If you can quantify that, that would be really helpful. So. Uh, engineering, I've got to mention, is approximately uh, you know one third of the total uh, business that we do at this particular point of time. And the group business that we do is approximately 33 to 34 percent. Uh, if I compare it with what it was when the merger happened, but when the merger happened, the group business was approximately 27 percent of the total business, 25 to 27 percent of the total business. Right now, it's uh, close to 33, 33, 34 percent of the total business. And uh, that is the pie which is growing, and that pie is primarily from the engineering side. Sure, understood. Uh, and just last question on the margins. And you mentioned about 16 to 70 percent over the last, next three quarters. Uh, should we see 16 percent reverting back immediately in the first quarter itself? Uh, yeah, we are at 15.6, uh, and I think we should we should be able to get to 15. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that's it for my side. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, Asha, can you get the next question, please? Thank you very much. 
Next question is from the line of Faisal Hawa from a Jihavan company. Please go ahead. Uh, so, sir, we always say that you know uh, the outlook for uh, IT services uh, you know is still not uh, very clear to us. But uh, uh, why are we not you know attempting to get more uh, work out of our parent itself? And you know, I, I appreciate that we have increased our uh, share with them also by around seven to eight percent. But uh, I think the easiest way could do could be to you know get work from them and uh, you know uh, get a lot of outsourcing done. Uh, yes, Mr. Rabat. So, you know, that's what the that's what we have been trying to drive as well. Let's look at what we said is that, you know, by 2025, we should ideally have 45% of the business coming from the boot and 55% of the business coming uh, through our direct market. The challenge with the core market, which I said, which is primarily UK and Europe, uh, continues for the group as well. So, uh, you know, whatever challenges that we are facing, they also have the same challenge. And what the, uh, the outsourcing which the group does is primarily the new business that they are trying to acquire rather than the existing ones because it's not easy to ramp down uh, the existing headcount uh, you know, in Europe and uh, start uh, building the headcount here. It's only for the new businesses that the group is winning that we have a significant portion of the business which comes to India. And uh, if there is a challenge with getting new businesses, then obviously we have a uh, new part uh, here as well. The group is trying to do everything possible, and that's the reason why our share from the group business is uh, continuously increasing. I think most conversations with uh, you know uh, on LinkedIn, etc. XPO uh, Global is always saying that you know they are growing at 20, 25 percent, and you know, they have almost, I think, if I'm correctly informed, they have reached like 1.7 billion dollar revenue, uh, 1.7 uh, euro revenue. So I mean, I mean, at at the very least, we should be growing, you know, commensurate to that, and uh, you know. We should enjoy better margins also because that, that involves zero marketing cost. Not really. I, I'm not sure where you saw the 1.7 billion euros. Uh, the last year we closed at uh, around 1.49, uh, and uh, you know currently we are at uh, little over one. Uh, the expectation is that we will probably be in the range of around 1.5 to 1.6 this year. Uh, we have not touched 1.7 uh, as yet, and the group is growing at anywhere between 0.15 billion. But you know, this this same entity used to be 1 billion around one and a half to two years back. So, uh, I mean, no, it was actually so when when the when uh, the uh, when the uh, the assistant uh, and uh, SQS acquisition happened, we were at close to around 1.1 billion, and when the COVID hit. Uh, the revenue went below 1 billion. And then in uh, 2021, uh, or 2021, we crossed the 1 billion mark again. Last year, we closed at around 1.2 billion. And then we, uh, you know, uh, this year, we closed at around 1.4 billion. And uh, the expectation is that we'll close anywhere between 1.6 billion, 1.55 to 1.6 billion this year is what our expectation. We'll be growing at an average of around uh, 12 to 14 percent uh, at the group level, and uh, <clears throat> group group is actually currently at an, uh, a bit of percentage of little less than nine percent, and the expectation is the group also will be at around 10 percent. So, sir, when we switch for new business, uh, why are we losing out? Uh, you know, which which vertical or which uh, you know capability is absent in our company due to which we lose out on business? Uh, so losing out on business is primarily, uh, you know, it, if I were to look at from a capability perspective, we only pitch for where we have the capability rather than prime and That's why in think that no, we are trying to invest uh, in terms of even the smaller acquisitions that we are doing, is in terms of what capability we don't have, which we can actually pitch. And on losing out, uh, you know, uh, either it's because of the price or it's because of uh, some other size of uh, the engagement because the customers look for larger companies as there are larger engagements. So, uh, we are not losing out primarily because of capability, uh, because we only choose the uh, areas where we have capability. And it's only in smaller engagements where we uh, try and do the experiments, uh, because that's where the customer also will be uh, OK with, with uh, experimenting or trying out with somebody new. So the most recent acquisition that we made around the one and a half years back, what is the revenue of that company now? When we made the acquisition, they were at around 3.5 million euro, uh, 3.5 million dollars. Last year we closed at a little over 5 million uh, dollars from that perspective. 
but they are ha- helping us with the uh, capabilities at least. That's right. Yeah. I appreciate your answering my questions so well, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from the line of Jagdishwar from Japa Investments. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yes. So uh, this is regarding uh, the receivables day. If I see the slide, the receivables day is showing at 104. And I presume it is based on standalone number. But if I take the consolidated number, receivables days are quite less. So why is it that we are showing our receivables day on standalone number? And, uh, and why not on consolidated number? This is my first question. Okay, I'll take this question. Yeah, yes, please. I'll take this question. Uh, uh, this uh, number is actually a consolidated financial number. I'm not sure, you know, that you are saying this is standalone. So, how many four days is basically our concern? Uh, Sorry? I guess 950 crore is the top, top line. And if you divide that with 250, Divided by 950, it is coming at 94 days. Standalone uh, receivables are much higher than consolidated receivables. You are only looking at, I think, uh, accounts receivable, right? I think this DSO includes until as well. So, uh, so how do you calculate? If you can explain, I mean, my, my calculation was showing that I was using all the consolidated numbers mm-hmm. and getting the receivable days of 94. And your presentation say one zero four days of receivable. So your calculation methodology you can explain. Sure, I can. Uh, yeah, I can uh, probably uh, provide that explanation separately. But uh, you know, if, uh, what I would like to confirm is only based on the consolidated financial. And uh, the reason why the DSO has gone up compared to the previous quarter is because uh, one of the uh, so selection from our group is, has been a little lower in this quarter. And also from one of our peak lines, uh, it's, uh, it's it's low from this in this quarter, and we have been able to collect from both uh, our group as well as from the peak line, and uh, our cash balance has substantially improved in the month of April, and our DSO has gone down from 104 to 98 days. Okay, I see. No, it has gone down, or uh, uh, why? Why? Uh, I mean, so your basis of calculation is. Uh, Consolidated balance sheet receivables end of the year receivables divided by total revenue for that particular year. That's right, is it? That's right. That's or right. So you don't receivable. adjust anything uh, other than that. Yeah, correct. It is receivable including unbilled. It's the sum of the two divided by. Okay. 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 That is your own internal figure. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. And second question is uh, we have missed dividend again this year. Last year we get some dividends. And given the size of the acquisition proposed or planned or thought out, isn't it uh, prudent to you know maintain uh, some kind of dividend payout policy to to ensure uh, stability in uh, signaling shareholder interest? Because uh, you know uh, financial year went by. I mean we closed. I mean it is a reasonable number given the tough environment, and we are still sitting on a sizable cash. So, uh, so Balaji, you can explain uh, your thoughts on this. Yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, there was a similar question from Rohit as well when we started the call. So, what we are doing is that we are looking at, uh, you know, what kind of acquisition that we can do locally here in India while the group is having its own plan. And we have, we are looking at or we will be able to do during this quarter. And if we are not able to close anything during this particular quarter, then we will go back to the board uh, and ask for suggestions on how we can do the uh, capital allocation and cash allocation. Uh, so the plan is to see if there is anything that we can do as an acquisition which will be more uh, accurate uh, for everybody. Uh, and if we are not able to do it, then we will relook at 
what we need to do from a revision perspective. Thank you so much. And all of it. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Konal Shah from Manham Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is in the rationalization that we're looking at in the headcount. Uh, is there a number in mind where you want this to settle? Uh, yeah, so it will be based on what we have as a uh, uh, demand for all. So right now, I think most of the action has been already taken. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not expecting any big uh, changes, but uh, like, uh, you know, what you would do uh, typically takes three months for the headcount to actually exit from the system and that's the reason why there are some numbers that are already there in the system as well. So right. we don't expect the build head count uh, you know, to reduce significantly from here at this point mm -hmm. of time. Uh, and currently we were running at approximately uh, you know in uh, uh, you know in the mid teens uh, in terms of our uh, bench percentages which Got we it. are looking at trying and getting it to ten percent or so. It should happen during the course of this quarter. Perfect. Perfect. And second question is on the line. Uh, it was the business that we are generating on our own. So, you know, the parent business is going well. What are the steps we are taking you know, to grow our business faster? Because, you know, we are still a small company. And at this yep. stage, stage, our growth can be much faster because we have a lot of good tech on our books or mm -hmm. in our capabilities which we have. So, what are the steps we are taking to, you know, utilize that better? So, uh, you know, even though the group is not big in the U.S. or not focusing on the U.S., we did the investment around a year and a half back uh, of buying a data management uh, and data quality company in the U.S. Hmm. And that particular business is uh, growing quite fast and it's growing at almost 40 to 50% uh, year on year. Good. And uh, the other markets like uh, Middle East uh, and uh, India, India, of course, we all know, you know, the profitability is a challenge. So we are being, we are focusing on where we will be able to do a balance between both profitability and uh, the growth. So both the India market and the middle. The person you are speaking with has put your call on hold. Participants, please stay connected. Some other incoming call, uh, which I had to disconnect. So we are looking at what is it that we can do uh, in growing both Middle East and uh, the India market. Hmm. Okay, but so in terms of this, I see the revenue fix. Uh, you know, we still get fifty percent of our revenue. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Fifty. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so we get fifty percent of our revenue approximately from Europe, which is a key market for us. It, despite uh, if you take out the group group business as well. So how mm -hmm. how are you know how can we grow that business? You know, Middle East and India, I understand, but Europe, it is a very competitive market because a lot of Indian companies, additional companies are present there. How do you plan to you know grow that business? Part of the business. So that's what we are trying to focus through the group, uh, and uh, you know from uh, from specific domains, particularly in the technology and digital space, India is the most preferred location for uh, the group to also as well from Europe. So okay. as the demand grows up, uh, goes up in Europe, we'll get more business from the group. Uh, okay. And like somebody else also mentioned, in, uh, you know, in the, one of the other gentlemen mentioned, uh, the opportunity to grow to the group basically would mean that, you know, we our margins are more or less secured because it's, it's a uh, costless model and we really don't incur too much on our sales uh, expenses. Right. Okay, uh, and uh, this, uh, this subsidiary that we're opening in Thailand, uh, what is the idea behind that? It's for one particular customer who's actually uh, with from whom we are trying to, uh, you know, uh, engage in this particular market. They, are, they want to grow that particular uh, geography and there is an opportunity to add uh, some 40, 50 account during the course of this year, which we are able to do it. Of course, it's not finalized as it. Okay. We just wanted the the board to approve uh, setting up that office. Okay. We will open the office once we uh, once we uh, are clear about the opportunity and uh, there's only in principle approval that we have taken. Okay. Thank you. 
and in terms of our business development team you know of uh, the own business not the group business uh, what would be the strength like and how that has changed over the last four five years so uh when we when i joined six years back we had around six people who were doing business development right now we have 14 of them uh between uh india mujis and uh, uh in the south east asia market we have recently we also hired a sales manager in uh, us as well okay uh, the that was around last end of last year so we are on 14 people right now okay. <coughs> and we also have another close to around 18 to 20 people who are part of pre sales who are also focused on user growth got it great thank you so much thank you thank you thank you next question is from the line of priyankar sarkar from square 64 capital advisors please go ahead hello hope i'm audible yes sir yeah yes yeah, sir. sir one quick question clarification rather sir if you can split how much we get from the group for engineering as well as for the technology segment Uh, money would be hard, but number handy. So there, um, we don't have it handy, but I think I can get it. If I can get a few more, yeah, I can probably try and give you a rough uh, order of magnitude. Uh, so, sure. uh, approximately thirty-four uh, to thirty-five million is what we get with the group, out of which uh, around the. Uh, Eleven to twelve million is from the technology business, and the remaining uh, close to around twenty-one to twenty-two million is from the engineering. Eleven to twelve million is from tech, and the rest is from uh, engineering. From engineering, yeah. Okay, and sir, so which segment? Only I'm only talking from the group. Which segment is going fastest? Engineering, right? Engineering, yes. Okay, and sir, so in terms of competition in the engineering space, who would be our competitors it depends on sector uh, so if you were to take the uh, automotive uh, sector it's primarily uh, you know people like kpit and uh, <coughs> uh, you know alton altron which is part of fab gemini now and if you take the avionics or the uh, the aero uh, sector it's uh, Uh, it's primarily the OEM, so they have their own capital center here. <coughs> Whether it's Boeing or Airbus or so, uh, all of them have their own uh, centers here. And <coughs> apart from that, uh, you know, Capgemini, uh, you know, Alpen, uh, from an uh, from a digital uh, perspective, also companies uh, like Actus Cardis and Accord and others are also uh, a competition for us. These uh, in the area structures and media mix uh, got it and sir also so in this engineering space which is approximately 33% of our business uh, that one third rather so that how would this fit be in terms of auto and the some of the other major segment uh, so it's uh, uh, almost 50% is aero and uh, approximately 40% is auto And another eight ten percent is other manufacturing industries. So forty percent is auto and fifty percent is aero. Got it. So sir, we would be also bumping into a like of a Tata, LXC, LNT Tech also yes. in auto. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, so LNT is also a customer of ours, but uh, they are also a competition in some cases. Okay. And sir, in this auto and aero, this bulk of the revenue. do we work with the captive or do we work with uh, like do we work with boeing let's say for example boeing in uh, captive in india or do we work boeing directly with the us counterpart uh, so we work with uh, both the uh, so there the group outsources to us they also have a person that's on the other as customer so we do work through the group for those customers and we also work with the the local companies as well when we are calling out the local local arbus <coughs> or you know or salantas or any of those those are part of our external revenue those are not part of the group numbers that we are talking about thank you okay. thank you very much thank you thank you
A request to all the participants kindly restrict to two questions per participant and join the queue again for a follow up question. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Chaudhary from Zenith. Please go ahead. Hello, yeah, good afternoon. My question would be like see, our uh, revenues have increased by, I think, close to 6% from the last year and quarter to this year. But uh, our expenses, and only, mainly the employee expenses, have gone by, I think, close to 16.5%. So, will this trend continue in, in time to come, or can there be a check on that? So, the, uh, the reason why we have uh, our employee expenses go out, uh, going up, is primarily uh, similar to what I mentioned. We have a higher bench uh, at this particular point of time, which we hired last year. Uh, you know, from the calendar quarter of uh, uh, Q3 onwards, uh, in anticipation of opportunities and growth which we were expecting uh, from the end of last year onwards, which didn't materialize. So we have started working on how to optimize this, and uh, that's why I said that we will probably have uh, a better utilization rate and uh, and, uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, lesser bench ratio uh, for next quarter onwards. So because like the thirty percent difference is is is, is not a difference. Uh, I've been, I know. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. We are acting on it, and we, that's that's where that's the optimization method that's going on. We started from February onwards, and uh, okay. we should start seeing the results from this quarter. But most of the results will be seen from next quarter on. Mm -hmm. And uh, did we have a, a, any forex loss this quarter? Okay. In my understanding, I think there there is a loss of five point six here. In, in the presentation that you have given, is there any forex loss? Any you want to pick that? Yes, yes, uh, I'll talk about that. Yeah, there is a forex loss in this quarter. So we have a forex loss of almost about uh, uh, 56 million in this quarter compared to. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we had in the previous quarter, we had almost 94 million forex gain. So, so, so this, this loss uh, is is, uh, is 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 family because we don't have your currency or what? Sorry, I, I didn't get your question. We we, we don't don't do any, any hedging in the currency. Yes. So yeah. So far we have not done any hedging, but uh, we are looking at uh, starting a hedging program going forward. We've also got some uh, principal approval from the board uh, recently, so we will be starting the hedging program too. So, so, so we can expect that loss to be minimized or or no low, low loss in time to come. Yeah, we should see some uh, uh, yeah yeah minimization in the coming quarters. And on the hedging program, we'll address it over a period of time. It's not going to immediately change the picture significantly, but uh, we should definitely see some uh, uh, minimization in the risk. Because like uh, because uh, because in uh, every year in one or two quarters we 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 have been chasing this issue. So I'm not sure why this has not been addressed earlier, but anyways. That, uh, that's because, you know, the product movements are unpredictable, right? It's based on market. Yeah, that, that's true. That is, that is why we, we, are, we, are, we are doing a policy of hedging. And, and just to clarify here, many of these losses are what we call it in that almost 80% of these are notional because it's not converted as yet, but we have to do the mark to market every quarter. And that's mm -hmm. the reason why this shows. Right now, it's not that all these money are converted and into Indian rupees and we have incurred this loss. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So again, for just for perspective here, I want to clarify. So last year we had 107 million of our exchange. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, even in the, in the last year, same quarter, we had 12 million of our exchange. Previous quarter, we had 93 million of our exchange. It is only this quarter we had incurred a substantial loss of 56 million. So this is the first quarter where we had a substantial loss. Otherwise, we have always been, uh, you know, mm -hmm. in the game. So when we talk about you know why this action has not been taken, it, 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 you know the impact of that has been felt only in this quarter. So now we have acted and we have started, you know, we have, we have started an aging program. So you should see the benefits coming in the future quarter. Okay. And there is one more last question is like uh, we had an acceleration of doubling our workforce by FY25. So are we still on track for that? And secondly, will that convert into a uh, doubling of revenues as well or not? Uh, no, it's not likely to happen because we anticipated a substantial amount of business growth and we also anticipated some inorganic growth as well, which we thought was likely to happen uh, in the last financial year and this financial year, uh, which we don't see that happening at this particular point of time. 
but from a headcount to revenue perspective, yeah, ideally the headcount growth should double the revenue. But if the significant amount of the growth is going to come from the group, which is one fixed market, uh, it may not exactly be that. But yeah, approximately it will be. If we double the headcount, the revenue should also the revenue should be almost double. Almost double, double. Yeah. So, so almost so, double. not exactly so, double, but almost. Okay. Double. So, so this is on hold at the moment, or will, will, will this uh, can can be taken care in, in later part? Of uh, no, I don't think I don't see us. Uh, you know, we talked about we we talked about March 2026 to be 10,000 headcount. Uh, but given that we are right now, unless otherwise there is some significant. Uh, market correction and growth that's going to come, I don't think we'll be able to uh, achieve what we have set as our uh, goal. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I request all the participants kindly restrict to two questions per participant. Next question is from the line of Gunit Singh from Counter Technical PMS. Please go ahead. I sir, I want to understand the quarter and quarter headcount has gone down, but uh, still the employee expenses have gone up by 67%. So what's the reason for that? Money won't take much? Yeah, so, uh, you know, one of the reasons is uh, because, uh, you know, we also have some wage increments coming in, in this quarter. So that's kind of taken our costs higher, though the headcount has not grown that much. The second reason is our uh, proportion of on-site employees have gone up. So that's also kind of, you know, taken our cost higher comparatively. Uh, though on that account basis, it's not that significant a growth, but uh, uh, on cost, we have, uh, our costs have gone up. On-site as in the uh, movement from work to home to on-site? No, no, no. Of sure. Moving mm-hmm. from India to India to all. Mm-hmm. India to yes. Outside okay. all right. Okay. Well, and you mentioned that the demand scenario uh, will is likely to pick up, but uh, right now it is still under pressure. But you also mentioned that uh, you would not be significantly reducing the headcount, and uh, that you will uh, reduce the bench from uh, about mid-teens to 10%. So, uh, I mean, without uh, significant demand, uh, I mean, how do we uh, see the bench reducing without any reduction in headcount. I mean, can you throw some light on that? No, we didn't reduce headcount. That's what I mentioned. So, you know, when we, we bench will reduce with the reduction in headcount. But most of the actions have already been taken. So right now, if, with the numbers that you see are people who are on notice as well. And as you know, in India, you need to have the three months minimum uh, from the time you start taking action for the headcount and not showing your books. So, uh, <coughs> And Most of the action will be taken, but the numbers will actually show only going forward. Got it, got it, sir. So, and lastly, you mentioned that uh, we would be continuing with the current uh, growth trend. So, we saw about an uh, eight to ten percent increase in the venues in FY twenty four. So, I mean, uh, in terms of FY twenty five, do we uh, expect the revenues to be stable, or do we expect to maintain these levels? And on top of this, do we also expect similar kind of uh, growth of about 8 to 10 percent? Uh, we expect that we should be closer to double digit for this financial year. While the, the initial target was much higher, much higher than that, sorry. Much higher than that. We expect that we should be able to, uh, we should be closer to double digit growth. Uh, Sorry, All right, so double digit growth with an improvement in uh, with the margins to 16, 17 percent. All right, sir. Uh, wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Next question is from the line of Rahil Shah from Crown Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. No, I was just uh, going to ask in the similar the growth thing. So, uh, what is stopping us at the moment from growing in you know mid teens at least? And by when do you see us getting there? And what what will be required to get us there? Uh, if you could just uh, speak on that, please. <coughs> Sorry. So we, uh, you know, originally our plan was that we will probably be able to grow at. Uh, 20-25% and that's the basis with which we had the headcount 
when we started the year as well. However, the demand wasn't uh, in line with that, and that's the reason why we are acting on uh, optimizing our headcount as well. Uh, this year, we don't expect uh, we expect to be in that double digit, like what I mentioned, and uh, hopefully by end of this year, once the demand starts picking up from the core market, uh, we should I we should be uh, in the teens or even better than that to uh, the trading percent range, which uh, hopefully should be uh, seen in the next financial year. So by first quarter next financial, you think you'll be able to start with the teens and 20% growth? <coughs> and, uh, and depending on the market environment. Absolutely. <coughs> All right. And when you say EBITDA should be negative 16, 17 within our next three quarters, why do you just mention next three quarters? What do you expect for the full year? Or quarter four, it, it, it can be different, higher or lower. So it depends. And once the uh, once the demand picks up, uh, that in the, in the first two quarters we may have to invest in getting uh, headcount and uh, making sure that we are ready to uh, capture that growth. So that's why we are watching every quarter. And uh, the the quarter that where we see the demand picking up, we may probably have a little bit higher cost. But over a period of time, it, it should it should go back to the fifteen to seventeen percent. But so still on an average, we can assume 16 at least yeah. low yeah. end for the year. That's right. Oh. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next follow up question is <laughs> from VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, that is one question was just to understand uh, what was the growth in this quarter. For the group business versus the non-group business. Uh, so the this quarter the, the non-group business grew by around uh, uh, four to five percent, and the group business grew by around uh, um, sorry uh, non-group business grew by around three percent, and the group business grew by a little over five percent. I see. And in terms of the uh, wage hike that uh, many talked about. Uh, have we been always giving the wage hike in Q1 uh, calendar or uh, uh, Q4 fiscal year? Or there was something special, which is why we did it in this particular quarter? We actually postponed our wage increments by a quarter. Normally, it happens from January 1st onwards. Uh, this year, primarily because of the slowness and demand, and also we wanted to uh, align with our budgeting process, uh, you know, we postponed it by a quarter. So the number we are looking at is 156 crore of employee cost. This is without the wage hike. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so part of the wage hikes were done in January, where we had already promised. <coughs> part of the wage hikes are actually from effective from April 1st onwards. I see. Okay. So this 156 crore of employee cost uh, in, the, in the June quarter. Do you think it will stabilize here or will it go down because of the actions you have taken on the uh, reduction of the workforce? Um, money, you want to take that? Yes, I'll, I'll do that. So, yeah, we expect this to slightly go down uh, because in this quarter, uh, you know, there's a partial wage hike and then there is also, uh, we have, uh, while we have taken action, uh, the people still have a bit, approximately the three months notice so the, the Headcount has come down to the end of the quarter, so that's why you see a headcount reduction. But for the for the cost perspective, the costs have been mostly there in this entire quarter. So you will see that uh, going down the, in the subsequent quarters, as well as you mentioned. Uh, but you know the other part of the wage hike will also come in, uh, so that will kind of to some extent compensate. But overall, we still expect that you know we will continue to take action, so we should continue to see. Uh, some reduction in this cost. Though it might not be substantial, there should be a margin reduction to this cost. It, it shouldn't go, go up. Got it. And just the last question on the uh, revenue by industry. Our engineering business seems to be uh, coming down. So anything in particular that you want to call out there? So we had some challenges with the automotive industry. And particularly the reason was that if you recollect last quarter, we had a one-time which came from one of the customers. And last year also it was from the same customer where 
because the work which was done there back in 2021 where we were uh, building the change request or uh, the increase so that's the reason why there is a slight bit that you would see in, uh, in uh, the automotive uh, specifically but other than that that's it's not coming down uh, organically it's not coming down <laughs> i see <clears throat> Thank you very much. Next question is from Line of Rovel from Mytho DMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, well, the most questions have been answered. Uh, I mean, I was just trying to uh, sort of further understand uh, beyond CY twenty four. How does one look at growth? Uh, I mean, that's the only question that I have. You said ten percent this year, roughly, uh, uh, and uh, as you said, that CY twenty five ten thousand is not is not happening. Have we sort of revised our internal targets to something which is more achievable now, say so CY twenty five or uh, or something? If and if you are willing to share that, oh, we haven't reworked on the numbers uh, in terms of headcount or uh, primarily because we are trying to also stabilize on. Make sure that we have a clearer view on what is going to come from the group and what is going to be uh, done uh, from the direct markets. Uh, but like what I mentioned, the expectation even even in this year, we thought that you know once the core market picks up, we should probably be in the high teens or so. But that, that that's not something which we are seeing at this particular point of time. But hopefully, uh, you know, before the Q4 calendar year, uh, you know, we should uh, we should start the Some growth, and that's why I think that you know, next year our ambition or our endeavour is to you know be in the teens to twenty percent uh, plus range, which is what we did in twenty one and twenty two uh, to go back to uh, you know uh, those growth rates. And just sort of related to this, I mean, it was asked earlier as well in the call. <coughs> the price is so low, right? And and uh, what else? I mean. Uh, Ideally, we shouldn't really be too much impacted by the market. I'm sure. I mean, any market is definitely impacted by the demand environment and etc. But given the base itself is so low, uh, especially if we look at our direct business, is there something that we can do more to get uh, at least better than the market growth, uh, given that size is is like not very high? Uh, so, I mean, is there something which is lacking or Uh, yeah, so yeah. So we can find different reasons, but see, the, the challenge is also that when the market itself is slow, uh, you know, mm. uh, the bigger players are uh, ready to throw in anything, uh, you know, to get even smaller engagement. Because normally you don't find the bigger players battling for one million and two million uh, deals. Uh, but nowadays, uh, you know, everybody is there for, in the race for everything. Uh, so it, it, it is. Uh, you know, it's a question of uh, uh, you know how large the pie is and who is ready to uh, uh, you know take what part of that particular pie. So uh, well, I agree with you that no, and when we are small, you should be able to. Uh, technically, what you're saying is right, uh, but uh, uh, that's not what we are seeing in the market at this particular point of time. One is the customer's discretion we spend itself is lower, and uh, wherever there is a spend. Irrespective of the size of the deal, we are actually seeing bigger players playing in those uh, opportunities as well. So it's a combination of multiple things. But uh, having said that, that's the reason why we are actually we are actually seeing some amount of marginal growth from where we are. <coughs> right. And then last question on this. So let's say uh, if growth picks up, uh, whenever it picks up, uh, whether it is direct or your book business, as you scale. uh right now we are at about 100 odd million dollars like more than 100 million dollars uh around 120 or million dollars but let's say as you sort of get to more close to 200 million dollars uh is there any leverage or operating leverage benefits that you will have uh and and uh, can the margins go beyond what you have indicated or it is not going to be the case uh how should one think about that Uh, I would say that you know the margins, uh, you know, depending upon the mix, as engineering business grows more, and uh, you know, uh, 
uh, you know, the engineering margins are not uh, as much as what the technical technology services margins are currently. Uh, we don't expect. That's why, uh, given the range of 16 to 18, I don't think it's going to change way beyond that. And so, that's helpful. Thank you very much. And I would really appreciate if you can uh, have a clear thought process on the payout because uh, on your capital allocation because markets typically would not like cash being. I mean, at least the thought process yeah. is very. Appreciated, and we've been waiting for a very long time, Balaji. I mean, we waited for the merger to happen, and after merger, also there is no clear thought process. So, I mean, really, as shareholders, I mean, uh, you must uh, at least have at least some clarity. I would really appreciate it. It's uh, something sure. that come in the coming quarter. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Thank you. Uh, thank you for all the participants and the questions. Uh, I appreciate uh, all your interests uh, with us, and uh, hopefully we should be back uh, in a with better results for next quarter. And uh, I'm looking forward to the same level of support. Any you want to add anything more? Well, I think uh, we covered it, Balaji. So yeah, we are expecting to definitely have a better result next quarter. So we'll come back with. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. On behalf of SPS Solutions Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.